All right, welcome to our video today. Today is Tuesday, July the 14th, and I hope you're having a great day today. And so we're gonna be getting into our video now. Uh, and we are uh, beginning today, uh, let's, if you will, please look over here. We are beginning a brand new area of the tournament, okay? Uh, if you've been watching our videos, you know that we just completed what is called Region 4. Today we're moving to Region 3. And so you're going to see some very interesting names in this, uh, in this part of the bracket of the tournament. Uh, you see Mordecai uh, from the book of Esther, King David, there's Elisha the prophet and Isaiah the prophet. There is Aaron, the brother of Moses, and Elijah the prophet. And then you see Boaz from the book of Ruth and Jacob from the book of Genesis. So this is our new area of the tournament. And as you can see, today's video, we are starting with Boaz and Jacob. This is going to be an exciting video today. I would like to update you on yesterday's video. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. Uh, yesterday's video was between Noah, the fourth ranked person in the tournament, and King Josiah, the 29th ranked person. Folks, I'm going to tell you we have an incredible surprise right now. We have King Josiah with a 62% lead. Noah has only 38% of the votes. I do think there may be some that have not voted yet. That will go through tomorrow. The, the voting will end tomorrow for that video. So please cast your vote if you haven't. But folks, we may have our first huge surprise of the tournament with Noah possibly going out in the first round. Okay, so with that being said, I'd like to go ahead and begin with our video today. We're going to be starting with Boaz. Now, folks, if you have never heard of him, I'm about to introduce to you one of the most beloved characters in the Bible. Okay, if you've never read the book of Ruth, please do so. Folks, it is only four chapters. You can read the whole book in probably 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes tops. It is a wonderful story. And I'm just going to tell you that Boaz is the hero of that story. Okay? So, um, very quickly, I, I would like to say, before I tell you the first thing about him, that the book of Ruth begins with a tragedy. It begins with uh, three men dying. And one of them had a young wife named Ruth. And she decides to stay with her mother-in-law and to be close to her. So they go back to their home where they're from. It's called Bethlehem. Have you ever heard of Bethlehem? Probably from the Christmas story, you'll be amazed that Bethlehem is seen way back in the Old Testament in the little book of Ruth. But they arrive in Bethlehem and young Ruth decides that she wants to take care of her mother-in-law, Naomi. So Ruth goes to work, and she goes out into some fields to begin trying to make a little money and get some food for her and her mother-in-law. And folks, I believe the hand of God was in this. She arrives in the... in the... Um, in a field that is owned by this man right here, okay? 
He, according to the Bible, it says that he was a mighty man of wealth. He was very wealthy, very rich. <clears throat> Please remember, folks, that in the Bible there are several very rich people. Just because someone is rich doesn't mean they got that worldly. The Bible says that God gives riches to some so that they can be rich in good works. Okay, Boaz is that kind of man. So I'm going to write it up here first of all. Um, that, let's see. That he was a wealthy landowner. Okay? Now, what I mean by that, folks, I'm not just trying to brag on him for his success. I'm just, I would like you to see this, that you're going to notice in the story he has a heart for giving. He has a heart for honoring God with what he has. He is an inspiration. Well, folks, um, if you know the story, Ruth begins to work in the fields of Boaz, and she begins doing a great job, and Boaz notices the job that she is doing, and Boaz wants to reward her for this. He finds out about her, and he learns that she was the wife of his cousin his cousin that had recently passed away. So he wants to be very kind to her, okay? And so he tells her, uh, let's see, for the sake of time, I'm not going to read the scripture, but you can look it up in chapter 2, verse 8 through 10 of the book of Ruth. He tells her to stay in my fields, he says, please do not go work anywhere else. Stay here. He says, I will take care of you. I'll provide you with plenty. And he said, I'll even give you extra. So folks, what I see about Boaz, not only was he very successful and had a heart to honor God with his success, but he was very kind and very giving. And we see that with Ruth. So, I'm going to say that he shows, uh, that he shows kindness to Ruth. Okay. He shows kindness to Ruth. Now, I must fast forward the story for the sake of time, but he eventually, he's, he's becoming uh, uh, interested in Ruth, and Ruth is interested in him. And by the law, if a man died and he did not have children yet with his wife, the nearest of kin, cousin, could marry that widow and raise up children in honor of the first husband. Well, anyway, so folks, long story short, uh, they decide, Boaz decides, they want to marry each other, they want to be together, but he is not the nearest of kin. He is the second nearest of kin. It's a wonderful story, folks. So if you read it, they have to wait and they have to see what the nearest of kin is going to do first and Boaz you see the faith that he has and the trust in God that he has because he tells Ruth he says he says let's just wait let's trust in God let's be patient 
And he basically is telling her, if it's God's will, it will happen. There is a verse, folks. Please read it when you have some time. It's in Ruth chapter 3, verse 18, uh, where it is said that Boaz, he was not going to rest until he knew what the other nearest of kin was going to do. In other words, folks, <clears throat> he had such a trust in God over this. So I'm going to write that down, that he has a strong trust in God. You're going to notice something about Boaz here, that he is not a preacher. He is not like some of these other men who, who was speaking he is one of those men in the Bible that was a family man, that was a hardworking, successful man, one that loved God and trained his children. Okay? This is an, a wonderful example. He is an inspiration to me and many others. So is Jacob, by the way. We're going to get to him in a moment. But I want to end it with that, is that if you read the story they eventually get married, and they have children. You may have heard of Boaz's great-grandson. His name is David. He becomes King David, the greatest king Israel ever had. Folks, that shows me the kind of legacy that Boaz left for his children and his grandchildren and great-grandchildren like King David. He left a spiritual legacy. As I said, a hard-working man of faith. He left a spiritual legacy for his family. Okay? So, folks, there you go. That is the story of Boaz. It's very hard to say it very quickly in this video for me to tell you the whole story. But I hope that you get a good, clear picture of who he is. I think he has a great chance in today's video, even being the 27th rank and the number 6 rank. But now, folks, I would like to look at Jacob for a moment. Okay, Jacob is just as much inspirational. First of all, I'm going to say this quickly. <clears throat> if you remember, God chose Abraham to make the Jewish nation, the nation of Israel. Abraham's, he had a son named Isaac. Isaac had a son named Jacob. This Jacob right here. One day, God changed Jacob's name, and I'm going to show you the name he was given. <clears throat> His name was changed to Israel. Okay? So, folks, if you ever wonder, where does the name Israel come from for the country? It came from this man. God changed his name to Israel. Now, folks, if you know the story of Jacob, I must tell you this. He is known for a little trickery, okay? Uh, <clears throat> sorry for my throat today. Uh, anyway, he is known for some trickery ways. And if you know your Bible, um, he was able to trick his dad into giving him the blessing, the family blessing that normally went to the older son. He got that blessing from his dad instead of it going to his brother Esau. So I'm going to write that up here. He tricked his dad. Uh, for the blessing. Now, folks, I ask you to please don't judge 
your vote today just on that one simple thing. Because you say, well, Brother Scott, that doesn't sound very good. Well, yeah, it doesn't, but everyone in the Bible has some kind of mistake. The Apostle Peter denied Christ three times and cursed God. Um, many, many mistakes, okay? Uh, but anyway, he got the blessing from his dad by tricking him. Now, <clears throat> um, Jacob at one point in his life, he saw a vision. You see, Jacob was wondering, is God really going to make a nation out of me? You see, because God changed his name to Israel and promised that nation to him. But Jacob was wondering, well, God appeared to him in a vision and showed him a ladder that was reaching from, he from earth all the way to heaven. And there was angels going up and down on this ladder. Folks, it would take me a long time to explain that completely in this little video but Jacob knew when he saw that vision, it's famously known as Jacob's Ladder. He knew when he saw that vision that it was God's way of telling him, Jacob, I am going to perform that in your life. If God starts a work in you folks, he will finish it. And, <clears throat> and uh, that, was, uh, <clears throat> that was proof to him, okay? So I'm going to write that down, that he saw a vision. He saw a vision, and I'm just going to call it, folks, of Jacob's Ladder. Okay? And I, and I just explained to you what that was. People call it Jacob's Ladder. It was a vision of God showing him an incredible sight, okay? Okay? So, folks, I'm going to tell you last of all about Jacob, the man that God changed his name to Israel. I'm going to tell you my most favorite thing about him. One night, Jacob was afraid. He was actually afraid of his brother Esau. Remember the whole trickery thing? Esau, Jacob thought, he's going to kill me. My brother's going to kill me because I stole his blessing. Jacob was very afraid. He thought he was about to die. And if you read your Bible, it says that God appeared to him. Uh, it's referred to as the angel of the Lord. And it says that Jacob wrestled with the angel all night. I know it may sound like a strange story, but it's true. It's in the Bible. And Jacob said, I'm not going to let you leave until you bless me. Now, folks, that inspires me a lot because I, sometimes I give up and I think we all do at moments. But Jacob had that confidence. He said, he said, I'm not going to let you leave until you bless me. Folks, sometimes I think you and I need to have that kind of confidence and say, Lord, I know you're going to bless me and I'm not going to give up until I see it. Okay. So I'm going to write that up here, folks that he, he wrestled with God, okay? Now, <laughs> I know that on the board this may look bad, okay? I know that may be like, oh my goodness, that's not good. You, you fought with God. Well, folks, please understand it was actually kind of a good thing he was doing that night. Um, it's, it, it's hard to explain it in a little tiny video like this, but it was a good thing. And Jacob got a blessing that night from God. Uh, it shows his perseverance and his, his belief in the Lord. So folks, I've done my best today um, to, to show you these two men. It's, it's so hard to do it this fast. But please think about it, pray about it. Who inspires you more? The man Boaz or the man Jacob, okay? So thank you so much for uh, tuning in today, and we will see you tomorrow. Have a great day. God bless you.